So this will be the final product. It's essentially what I'm trying to make in this film. Hi, so I was going online through YouTube looking for videos on sand art and things like that. And I was a little bit disappointed to find, you know, not that many instructional videos on how to create what I wanted to create. And I've become a little bit obsessed, maybe infatuated with creating things like that. Um, so I thought, why not publish what I'm doing myself? It's not really good, but it might help increase discussion, artistic discussion and collaborations on things similar to it. And um, I thought, you know, why not publish this online, especially since my scientific work right now is uh, continuously failing. So this might be a small accomplishment of some sort. You can see in the background some of the sand arts that I've created. Um, and so I'll go through one technique today and then maybe another one tomorrow. Uh, and it should be some pretty super fun stuff. Okay, one second. Yeah, so the first thing you want to do is get something that you'll make your sand art on. And right now I'm going to use just a cereal box that I've opened up. Uh, the problem with this is that once you apply the glue, it causes the the paper, the medium, to bend. I'm not exactly sure why, but if I had to hypothesize, it's probably because the glue is being absorbed by this side, thereby causing it to expand, and then it just sort of bends. And so what, what I like to do, what I like about the cereal box is that we've got these sides, these pieces here that you can rip off or cut off. But for now, I'm just going to use this, you know, like, rocks or something, put it down so that's anchored in place so that it cannot deform too much. But you can use thicker pieces of cardboard and that sometimes is better if you have access to it. Also, I'll quickly show you the sand that I'll be using. So this I just got from some store. These are all just different types of colored sand, which I think is pretty cool. Um, what I also have over here, this is just some glittery stuff I got from the dollar store, which I sometimes use. But this is uh, sand from Cape Cod. Uh, and it's really pretty nice. I tried using food coloring to make my own colored sand, but it wasn't vibrant enough, so that's why I bought other stuff. But this sand is really great and I use it often. And for sort of the darker colors, what I do is here is some uh, material from my backyard, from my garden. And so it has a symbolic value too. And so I used a, uh, a screen mesh and just let the fine particle uh, stuff of my soil come down after I sun dried it for a while. So the first thing that I like to do is clean off my workstation. And the only reason I'm showing that to you is that this is all like used sand that I've done, but it consists of a whole variety of different colors. Like I've got you know a higher density of purple here um, and some red and stuff. And the reason why I like to sort of save it is because you can use it as sand in the background. So it looks like noise. It has like speckles of red and purple and other different colors. Um, and so it has a very unique feel to it. So this mixture of different colors is actually kind of neat. Now what I'm going to do now is take just some normal glue and start just laying down the glue. The idea is to sort of create a uniform distribution of that glue all around this, uh, this area that I'll be working in. And the idea is to just get that um, sand to stick to it. Let me just see, that might be my mom, one sec. All right, so I have a nice lattice, if you call it that, a nice web of glue, and then I just take my finger and smooth it over. And some of the sand art videos that I've seen, what people use are these pre-made templates that are on lamination paper. And I have something similar to that, like the sticky paper that I got as a high school teacher for like six years, and they were throwing away all this lamination paper because back in the old days you'd have this sticky sticky stuff, you just peel it off and you put it on stuff. You didn't actually have a lamination machine like they do now. Um, so I, I took a lot of that from the trash, I rescued it, and so I used, try to use it for my sand art, but I don't know, I mean, the depth of sand that you can capture with lamination paper is not that significant, and I feel like you get a much richer feel from this this method right over here. And so what I want to create essentially is a nice sort of, I don't know, pastoral nature scene because it sort of calms the mind after a day of work. And so what the, what the vision is, is that I'm going to have like a little sun over here, I'll have clouds here, I'll have earth here, and maybe some sort of mountains. And I'm going to do that 
in two steps. The first step will be to lay down the ground colors and then afterwards go by with glue and sprinkle on things that define shapes of actual objects. So first thing I'll do is work on the ground and what's fun about this is that you don't need to be precise. So I'm just going to take some green and just start sprinkling it in the general area of where I think the ground will be. And if you get some in the sky, that's cool too, because you have sort of a mixture of earth with sky. There should be a sort of, uh, I don't know, like a, the threshold between earth and sky doesn't necessarily need to be perfectly well defined always. So the green here is representing plant, vegetation, earth, but I'll also take sort of the, the darker earth from my actual garden for outside and add this. And this adds like a nice texture to the whole the whole scene. And I'll, I'll make like little mountains over here so it should be pretty good. And I'm just gonna keep mixing it, put layers of green and layers of brown sort of throughout this entire region to give it a sort of mountainous green vegetation area. And one of the most beautiful things about this is that you can really get different feels of shading. And the sort of spontaneous nature of it has like a feeling of nature in it, in which you have sort of well-defined rules, but at the same time, it's sort of, I don't know if I'd call it victim, but it is under the influence of sort of entropy and, you know, a sort of randomness which you cannot necessarily predict. And so each of your creations will have a unique you know, thumbprint, which is pretty cool, I think. So I'll just keep adding a little bit here. You know, if you want to have a little bit of autumn feel to it, you can sprinkle a little bit of red on. I don't know if you can even see it, but there's a little bit of red there just to give the eye some diversity. And now, you could, this extended a little bit farther than I actually wanted it to, but it's okay, you know. This could be a different, different scene. Maybe I wanted the sky not to be so high, but that's cool. That's cool. So now I'm going to use the, the purple for a sky. This will be more like a midnight sky, a, a evening sky maybe. One reason I'm doing that is just because I don't even have blue. So that's, that's a limiting factor there. Um, and I can also do splashes of whatever color this is, like beige or something, right across where I think the earth and the sky meet. It gives us like a little bit of the sunset feel, maybe. Since my sun, when I go back and do it, will be primarily yellow, I don't want to have too much of those bright colors in the background, otherwise the sun is not going to like pop out. What I'm also going to do, I can see it too well, there's a purple, is now lay some red. And so you can see that I'm actually getting a pretty nice splash texture of it and, it and it has sort of like the feel of I don't know village cooking where it's not necessarily you know exact teaspoon and this and that but rather sort of like a, a sprinkling sort of awesomeness it comes with a little bit of experience too and I'll take a little bit of purple and let it encroach a little bit into the world of the ground, you know, the earth, earthly regions, just a little bit, but maybe if it's too much then I can just go back and add a little bit more green to it, and I'm in the mood for a little bit more of my own earth, just to sprinkling it there. The sky still seems a little bit uh, as if it's not conquered the glue completely, so I'm just going to go in again and just do that, and I want a little bit more red, and I'll just sprinkle. What I'm doing here is I'm just sort of pinching and slowly releasing so that when it falls it doesn't clump all in one area but has a more sort of semi-uniform feel to it. So that is really cool. At a future video I might try to do some more advanced... oh whoops. <laughs> Shading. I put some green in the sky. That's crazy. All right, so. You can usually mask that just by adding another layer. It just depends on how thick your glue is. If not, then sometimes it'll be there. And it's okay, you know, you, you, you can have some green in the sky. You know, 
to a whole bunch of things that you can do with that. Alright, I think I'm pretty much done with this portion of it. I'm just what I sometimes like to do is, so now I'm going to let it dry for like, I don't know, a few hours, but I'll come back again and see, you know, whether this has been absorbed or if there are areas that seem like, see over here, it seems a little bit damp, seems a little wet. So that tells me that maybe I don't have enough uh, stuff there. Whoops. Oh, jeez. I think part of the reason... So these mistakes are a lot of fun too, but part of the reason I made the mistakes is because I'm looking through the movie camera. Yeah, that's okay. Let's sort of dab it in. Do this sort of stuff. Get some more red. There you go. You're pretty, I mean, I'm pretty much done. Alright, so it's been a few hours. And I'll just try to... You can kind of see, it looks pretty cool. It's, again, just sort of a canvas of different colors in the background on which now we'll create different shapes. So the results, I think, are pretty awesome. It's not maybe professional-level artwork, but I think it has a nice expression to it. The sky, you can see there are these, you know, sort of meandering channels of lighter purple uh, and these darker gusts of red is sort of reminiscent of clouds dipped and saturated in the fluid of sunset or whatever you want to call it. And you've got these patches of brown over here, almost like an impressionistic view of tumbling vegetation. So what I'm going to do is take this glue and essentially just create the outline of mountains. Um, and there's really I'm just gonna lick up a pencil slowly, slowly, slowly. And you can see, you know, maybe this mountain scape is something like that. I don't know. You might have another mountain sort of rise up with greater might right here. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Um, and we could integrate a few more, maybe, uh, mountain range, mm, maybe like that. It's all sort of guesswork, but it's just sort of fun to see how these guys come out. Just like that. Um, maybe one last range sort of here. And the mountain top can actually... You know, you'd think that you wouldn't want this purple area for the mountaintop, but I think it adds a special appeal to it. The next thing you want to do is sort of take this glue and just spread it out so that you have a sort of continuous line. Right now, there are areas that are interrupted. You have more of a beating feeling to it. Eventually, as the glue dries, it's going to spread anyways. So there you go. What you're also going to find is the glue is, some of the glue is going to be absorbed in and you'll see these bubbles actually once the sand is there. So it's not going to look as uniform as the rest of the sand does over here. Alright, I think that's pretty much done. Now I'm going to make the sun, make it any way you like. I'm probably going to do like a spiral type thing. I like the spiral suns. You just... Do it like this, and maybe have a ray of sunshine undulating throughout the world, just like that. Yeah. 
That's pretty cool. Alright, so now I'm going to take this nice sort of bright yellow color and just sprinkle it over the sun area. Now because right now I laid down this glue, it has a sort of three-dimensional quality. It comes out from the board. But what's essentially going to happen is it's going to be absorbed into the board and you're not going to have that much of a, you know, push-up coming. But the problem now is that you've got these ridges that are up and then you've got the board which is down. And so essentially what you have to do is put enough sand so that it is equivalent in height to the glue that you've put there. And so in a way it's kind of wasting it, but... You know. So I'll even put a little bit of red here, just sprinkle, 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 just to give the sun some depth in color. There you go. And I can take a sort of beige-like color right over here and just add that. But I want the predominant color of the sun to sort of, sort of be this pure, you know, somewhat unadulterated yellow right over here. Even though these other colors are competing. There you go. Put a little bit of this guy in. And what I'll do later is sort of come back and check on it and see how the glue has absorbed the sand. In some places you'll see uh, that the, the sand will actually depress down and those are the areas that probably don't have enough sand. And so I'll go and put like a second coating of it there so that everything is down. Now the mountains is up to you, know, you what you want to do. I've tried doing the black earth, which is cool, and it works, but I think in my experience when I do the Cape Cod white sand, it pops out more. But if this is really like a sunset scene, then you'd expect that the mountains may not be such a bright color. So there you go. I'm just going to use this and just nicely put it there. Here's a grand finale next day. I'm just going to, let's see. Let me go out to this side. That's pretty cool. It's pretty nice.